Good evening and welcome to another edition of ATL Prime Sports. A special edition here is uh, I'm joined by my producer, Wayne, in Memphis. JJ's hey off wallowing about his uh, Falcons uh, loss again on Sunday and, of course, the Braves the week before. So I guess he really just couldn't handle coming on two times in one week. We'll have to. I'm just needle on, of course, but uh, right. it's been a tough week in Atlanta sports for the last couple of weeks, hasn't it, Wayne? Well, yeah, it it has. Uh, you know, the Georgia Bulldogs are kind of a bright spot. So, yeah, except they lost their last game to Alabama too. So, all yeah. right, everybody, just to let everybody know, you can get a hold of us on Twitter at myself at c o r d e r Todd. You can get a hold of us at ATL Prime Sports. You can get a hold of JJ at JJ Get You One and Wayne at R W Y at Junior. So that's where you can get all of us. And Wayne, let's go ahead and talk about it. It's the biggest story in sports, my friend. It, the World Series last night, the Los Angeles Dodgers uh, won it all in game six, defeating the Tampa Bay uh, Rays three to one. It was yeah. a pretty good baseball game, Wayne. Um, we could, everybody's talking about the manager Cash coming out to take out Snell early in the sixth inning when he was cruising along. Yeah, And, you know, everybody's saying it was the analytics. and But this was Tampa Bay's formula all season long, Wayne. I wouldn't have taken him out. Former uh, pitcher Jack Morris, who pitched for the – for you know, he won four World Series, one with the 84 with the Tigers, 91 with the Twins, 92 and 93 with the Blue Jays. He said, what are you doing taking out a pitcher? He said he'd never seen a pitcher throw that good and was on that good – up to that point in the World Series game, and was pulled. He couldn't believe his eyes. Yeah, my uh, my mother was watching the game, and she said she was kind of confused about it too. But if you had been watching them all along, like you said, that's kind of their formula. So, right, I, I their analytics cool. baseball team, everything's done through analytics. Right. Me, I'm old school. I really can't stand it. I get it where they can use it at times, but. You don't need analytics to tell you that Snell was just thrown as good as anybody I I that I had seen in a World Series game in a while. I, I do yeah. remember the '91 confrontation in Game Seven between John Smoltz of the Braves and Jack Morris of the Twins, and Jack Morris went ten innings that day, and John Smoltz went nine, yeah. and they were scoreless. Now, <laughs> Snell had only given up one run to that point. The right. other two were to the Rays' bullpen, which made the difference in the game. Did well, it lose yeah. him the game? Here we go again. Yeah. I don't think coaching costed him the game. <laughs> the decision was definitely very questionable, but players are the ones that play it. Yeah, well, you know, stuff like that, you really should treat the uh, postseason different than the regular season. And I think if that was their formula during the regular season, they should have altered it for the uh, postseason. Oh, there's no question about it. And, 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 you know, I just think that was one of the biggest managerial mistakes that I can remember in a World Series game in a long, long time. I just, that blows yeah. me away. You know, today's baseball, when you look at it, Wayne, once they get up to the 90 pitch count, there's a fire alarm that goes off in the dugout. Oh, time to get them out. Even yeah. if he's throwing fantastic, there's such a paranoia and yeah. protection of these arms that um, that's what they do now. So you know, we've talked about on this program how we would change baseball, and uh, we don't need to get into that. Let's go ahead and talk about, though, the big story, other than the Dodgers winning it all, was uh, Dodgers third baseman uh, Dun uh, Justin Turner uh, tested positive for COVID-19 right in the yeah. middle of the game. That's Manager weird. Dave Roberts pulled him out of the game. And this is a guy that's a leader of the Dodgers. Yeah. Never gets pulled out of the game. Been with them for years. Started out at the bottom of the ring for the minors. Struggled to make ball clubs. And here he got to the Dodgers and his career took off. So yeah. they pull him out of the game. And the Dodgers win it all. And what does he do? He comes right back out on the field. To yeah. celebrate with his teammates and all the Corona bros or Corona <laughs> Moes, whatever you want to call yeah. them, went nuts. Manfred, the commissioner of Major League Baseball, said that he broke coronavirus protocols. But the Dodgers, on the other hand, Wayne, they said he deserved to be on the field with us. He needed to celebrate with us. 
He was a gigantic part of our championship. And I'll tell you what, Turner even kissed his wife on yeah. the mouth, hugged his daughter, was in the pile with the rest of the players. Yeah, posing and, for pictures and everything. Right. And guess what else, Wayne? He was playing the game positive and could have been positive for a little while. Even though they're in this bubble, hey, I'd like to know how in the heck he got positive. I mean, you're in a bubble. The NHL and the NBA never had a positive test, and those two sports were in a bubble. So anyway, yeah. he's positive. Well, I would, uh, I would, I would interject. I would interject uh, seemingly positive because uh, they have to go through multiple uh, layers of testing. You know, the first one comes up, it says positive. Then they do several more just to verify that positive. And I think that's sort of what happened with Saban is his first one came up positive. Then he had two subsequent that were negative. And so it may have been a false positive. Well, we're going to find out, but they don't think it is in this case because they went through and did some samples and all that. So, but yes, it is possible. But in this case, I kind of doubt it. So anyway, what does he do during the celebration? He sits down next to his manager. Mm -hmm. the, the trophy's on it. I believe it's on his right. His manager's at, 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 at No, the manager's at the right and, and the trophy's on his left. Yeah. And the manager has had lymphoma cancer. Dave Roberts, he's recovered. But he, they all had their mask off. Yeah. Every one of them did. And everybody just threw an absolute fit on Twitter today. And I thought, come on. You know, Wayne, one thing that really gets me is you'll see them in the dugout with their mask on. Yeah. For the most part. Some players will have them on. Some won't. The coaches always have them on. Yet they go out to celebrate on the field and you don't see any, any mask on. You're in the locker room, especially in a football locker room. Yeah. Hardly anybody's got a mask on. This is all cosmetic theater to me, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things that you, uh, there's always going to be this type is uh, I, I call them like the, uh, the do gooder squad. Uh, you know, if I'm on the free, I'm going to put it in a different perspective. When I'm on the freeway driving, uh, I usually set my cruise control about five miles an hour over the speed limit. Now, there are some people that absolutely fly by me. I mean, in, a, in way in excess of the speed limit. And uh, it doesn't bother me. You know, I just kind of let them go on. But there are some that will just absolutely pitch a fit. When they see somebody flying by them on their tail, oh, I'm going to write down that guy's license. But I'm going to call the police. I can't believe that. Look at that crazy part. And uh, I think that's what these blue check marks are doing. Instead of saying, hey, you know, they're doing what they're doing and just letting them go on doing what they're doing. They feel like they need to interdict and become the uh, the do-gooder patrol and tell everybody about how terrible these people are. But, you know, they, they, it's, it's not their life. They need to kind of focus on their own life and quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. Well, that's well said. It's all a personal decision. I like how you put it. Not all the people that are on the sports media or in the media in general are all left wingers when they have this blue check mark. That just seems to be the general yeah. consensus well, the, that most yeah. of them are. Well, the do-gooders are the do-gooders are on uh, either side of that coin. They can either be liberal or they can be <laughs> conservative, and uh, I've encountered all kinds. So that's right. That's right. I mean that that's a great point. But you know, people just were trashing Dust Justin Turner, and you know, how can you? Crash this guy for wanting to celebrate on the field when he's already exposed himself during the game in the locker room before the game. Anyhow, now maybe maybe with Dave Roberts, he shouldn't have sat next to him. Okay, if you want to critique that, I get that because he's recovering. He, he recovered from lymphonia from cancer, but right. you know what? He had a mask on below his neck. He could have slipped it up. And, and yeah. Turner could have slipped it up next to him, too. I guess that's the only thing that would probably catch my eyes is that Turner should have thought, you know, wait a minute, the guy next to me, he did have cancer. I should probably put my mask on or I shouldn't sit next to him. But so excited this athlete was, I think he was determined to sit next to the World Series trophy. And Roberts yeah, well, just happened to be next to him. Yeah, well, there's a you have to consider the uh, emotional factor too. Uh, sometimes a person can be completely straight thinking and clear thinking and make 
great decisions all the time, but as soon as you kick emotions in there and celebration of a world championship is huge emotion, sure, uh, right. you, sure. you certainly uh, could lose track of all that other stuff. You might not even be thinking about that because you're so excited about the championship. Well, there's no question about it. I mean, the Dodgers have been knocking on this door. They've won the last seven division titles. Uh, they had a couple of World Series appearances before this year. And, and, and they finally got through. It's kind of like the Braves in the 90s, which we've mentioned on this show. Um, same type of formula. And, you know, and now that it's a 60-game season and they won the championship, folks want to put an asterisk next to it, which, yeah. in my opinion, is absolutely ridiculous because everybody played with the same rules. Yeah. Well, regardless, I think all the sports will somehow have an asterisk in them, even the ones that got – uh, Formula One is on pace to complete 17 races like they would in a normal season. However, they're not on tracks that they normally go to. And some of the tracks they went to twice just so they can get 17 races. And so even them, they're probably going to have some sort of asterisk on this season. And I just don't think that's fair. I mean, you're competing. It's under the same rules. It's the same situation. A championship's a championship. And the Dodgers certainly earned it. And Yes, Turner broke the COVID-19 MLB protocol, but it's time to move on. What are you going to do, fine him? He's not going to care. Are you going mean, to sit him out for a few games? What, what, next season? I mean, it's just yeah. ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I get it, though. I get where people are being sensitive, especially with Roberts being, you know, a, a lymphoma, cancer patient. That part, That's the part that I get the most. The rest of it is. It, 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 he was already exposed himself long before that. So well, I mean, he I just hope- exposed himself in the hotel, probably on the bus ride over. And except, heck, they could have left him in the ball game. It wouldn't have been no difference. It, you know, the Rays were out there. They probably, some of them probably got exposed too. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I really hope that they don't do, you know, if they're going to have any sort of, you know, uh, thing to do with this is I hope that they don't have him sit down and do some kind of goofy PSA where he sits down and he apologizes <laughs> and, you know, and they throw it up in front of millions of people is hey, cause that just really irritates me. And you can tell when that kind of thing is forced to, when somebody is sit down and told what to say. So I hope they don't go that route. He may apologize. You know, I didn't expect ex- mean to do it. I just lost my mind and I was excited to win the championship and et cetera. And I shouldn't have been next to uh, manager Dave Roberts or something like that. And that would be sincere. Um, You know, he got caught up in the moment. So, but congratulations to the Dodgers. Congratulations to the Rays who had a fabulous season. They just fell two games short of winning it all. It happens. It would have been nice if they would have won because then, uh, you know, I could have had an American league uh, world series champ, but, uh, I guess not. <laughs> you know what? From my side of the issue, sure. And yeah. also, you know, just think, had the Rays won it, Tampa Bay's already won the Stanley Cup. And, but, the, you know, the Lakers have won the NBA title. Now Los Angeles has the Lakers and the Dodgers as world champions. But Tampa Bay, in my opinion, they have a, the Buccaneers have a chance to win the Super Bowl, and they've already got Stanley yeah. Cup champion of Lightning. So Los Angeles and Tampa Bay. Yeah. have really stole the pandemic strike short in season situations. It's all those fan- done really well. All those, all those fancy beach communities. <laughs> I'd like to join one of those beach communities right now yeah. myself. I'll tell you what, Wayne, Wayne, let's switch over to uh, college football and let's talk about this Big Ten COVID policy, which I think is absolutely ludicrous and insane. If a player tests positive, he can't play for 21 days. We're talking, Wayne, an eight-game season and a nine-game season when you include the extra week, and that's if you get it all in nine straight weeks. If someone tests positive for 21, they're out 21 uh, 21 days, that's three games, that's a third of the season where, you know, the normal person tests positive of covid the CD says, CDC says set out 10 to 14 days. Yeah. And, and you go on about your normal life. My son tested positive at West Georgia University. He was in a dorm for 10 days. Yeah. Well, and, and these uh, are, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's the way the American Athletic Conference has been doing it, uh, going by those same guidelines. And it is kind of weird that the Big Ten 
maybe because they want to, you know, show some kind of, uh, I don't know what, you know, they want to go farther than they should. Yeah, look, their biggest mistake is, is they should have started the season when the SEC did or the Big 12 is what they should have did. Kevin mm-hmm. Warren, the commissioner of the Big Ten and company, fumbled the football there. There's no question about it. They should have been starting. That way they'd give themselves leeway if you have positive tests because you'd have open weeks during the season. You'd have bye weeks. There's no room for air here. Well, the Pac-10 and, the Pac-10 is in even a worse situation because theirs is uh, even shorter. Fantastic point. They start this week, or no, next week, next right. week, the seventh of November. Not, not until November. That's crazy. Uh, it's just it's it's ludicrous. But um, hey, teaches his own for his own <laughs> opinion. I understand. That's just my opinion. I I, I get it. But you know, and then. After the 21 days, they're going to make these athletes go through these tests before they even put the athlete back on the field is the Big Ten. And not only is somebody's missing three games, say it's a star quarterback, say it's Justin Fields of Ohio State. Well, there goes any chance. I don't know what Ohio State would do if they missed Justin Fields for three games. I think that would hurt their chances of, of – getting to the playoff immensely, or Michigan with Joel Milton, who had a spectacular performance last week against the Golden Gophers. So, but, you know, the big story in the Big Ten with this 21-game insane COVID policy is the Wisconsin program is now shut down for a week. Their game is canceled against Nebraska. Six players tested positive. Six staff members, including head head coach Paul Crist, Mm -hmm. which includes starting quarterback Graham Mertz, who had a spectacular game against Illinois, threw for five touchdowns. I think he only threw for one incomplete pass in the game. He was incredible, so he tested positive. And now you have the backup quarterback, Chase Wolf. He's positive, okay, and this gets better. The original starting quarterback, Jack Cohn, suffered a foot injury before the season started. He's out indefinitely. So now Wisconsin is down to their fourth string quarterback. And honestly, their season is in severe jeopardy. Yeah. It, well, this game was canceled against Nebraska this week, and they don't think they're going to make it up. Yeah. Well, they, they, they played pretty well against uh, Illinois. Everybody sure. plays well against <laughs> Illinois. They're the bottom feeder of the conference. Look at Rutgers, their first game of the year. Yeah. They defeated Michigan State. That was their first conference win. And now Greg Schiano's back for his second term. He was there. You know, he did really well his first term. And he won his first game back in his second term. And Rutgers finally won its first conference game since 20. 20- 17. I thought I thought Arkansas had a drought in the SEC. This <laughs> yeah. one tops that. So anyway, back to the Wisconsin situation. Now the Badgers, because of the crazy decisions by the Big Ten, they're reeling in a hole. Their season's in jeopardy, if you ask me. I mean, if they have any more test positive, you know, they've got a lot of players. They've got 85, but you're down yeah. to your four-string quarterback. And this is a team that's rated in the top 10, 15. They're contending for a Big Ten championship. They're the favorite in the West. And now COVID-19 is, has attacked them better than their opponent, Illinois, did. Yeah. Well, um, maybe it's uh, an opportunity for somebody to shine. You know. Well, <laughs> Your guys four-string off- quarterback's usually a walk-on at this point. Well, we, sometimes you get surprised. Uh, I, it, the chances are pretty slim, but uh, it'll be worth watching or keeping track of just to find out. Hey, my friend, hey. Stetson Bennett was a walk-on. Look what he's doing at Georgia. Yeah. You just never know in sports. Yeah. What, Ben Naducci of the Dallas Cowboys didn't <laughs> get a chance to start this week against yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles. He was drafted in the seventh round out of James Madison University. Maybe yeah. he lights it up this week and makes all the experts look foolish. Well, one thing's for sure, nobody knows what to expect from him except for the Dallas players, maybe. Well, they're going to have to run the football and feed Ezekiel Elliott left and right, keep that sorry Cowboys defense off the field. 
They already yeah. cut Don Terry Poe, the former Falcon today, among yeah. others that they decided to let go out the door. Uh, but the, back to the Wisconsin situation, I just don't get what the Big Ten did from the very beginning, Wayne, and it puts one of its premier teams in jeopardy. Well, and sometimes they feel like the – the I guess the conference, the people who are in charge of the conference uh, get a little bit uh, power strong or whatever you want to call it, and they think they need to show these athletes who's boss. Well, the governor's, uh, you, you know, the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, she was a part of it. There's no question about it. Michigan's um, uh, president, Michigan State president, they're doctors, they're they're infectious disease doctors. They know a lot about it, and they were erring evidently on the extreme side of caution. But it, the information was in front of them. These athletes are not going to die from coronavirus. The, how many college students? What? Um, oh, how many college students have tested positive now? We've only had two in the hospital, and they were out the same day. We're yeah. talking thousands and thousands of college students, and then you have these premier athletes. This virus is not going to get them. Their survival rate from zero to 40 is 99.98%. Yeah. And even 70 above is 94.6%. Now, if you've got multiple stuff wrong with you, yeah. yes, that is a problem, especially, you know, when remember when the CDC came out with 180,000 had, had passed at this point, 130,000 yeah. of these folks would have died this yeah. year anyhow. And then also when they came out with, that only 9,000 itself at that time died from the virus. And then the CDC took it off the, you know, its website and, and Twitter took it off and, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this to me is, is look, I, I take the virus seriously. I wear a mask for others. I do social yeah. distance, but let's face it. When I'm broadcasting a high school football game in a booth and I couldn't do division two, football uh, um, in the SIAC conference, HBCU, because they canceled their season, and that's fine, and they'll have a season in the spring, and and I'll be able to do football in the spring, which will be fine by me because I'm doing the fall now with high school football here in Georgia. So my point is I wear a mask all the way up until we kick off, or the pregame show. The mask right. is off. I'm, I'm exposing myself to my broadcast, my, my partner who's 74 years old. And, you know, we had a glass in front of us, but we kept standing up or in between us. We kept standing up all yeah. year long and we're like, forget it. We're exposing ourselves anyway. Yeah. And he doesn't wear a mask anyways. He has never worn one in front of me. So yeah. um, he probably does. But, you know, in this incident, he must feel really comfortable. So yeah. and that's fine. And that's where people need to understand is that we all need to respect each other's individual decisions as long as it doesn't affect the individual next to him or her in this case. Right. Well, there's a lot more risky things than, uh, than COVID -19. Out, yeah, out there. And um, I would say that uh, personal choice and personal decision should outweigh uh, over uh, zealous rules. Well, I mean, speaking of rules, you saw today the big story was President Trump went to Nebraska last night. It was in the 30s. And, mm. and, and and all his people, when he left, he flew in and out of there. And I guess there's only one way in and out of that airport there in the Omaha area. And right. some folks got really cold. It was in the 30s. And I yeah. guess some of them suffered hypothermia and had to go to the hospital. And they blamed Trump for that. And I'm going, wait a minute. The people in Omaha organized the situation. They had buses going in. They had buses going out. It was the individual people's decision. Like you said, they made the decision going there, knowing, knowing the situation they were going to be in. That it was going to be in the 30s and it was cold and older people were there and, and et cetera. I, I just don't think you can blame Trump for that. There's a lot of things you can blame Trump for, yeah. but that's not Trump's fault there. No, it sure isn't. Those people definitely uh, could have left any time. And, uh, you know, maybe they would have got to ride back on the bus. That's absolutely right. correct. The buses were going in and out the whole time. There was only one way in and out through the airport. So yeah. I just you, find it been, so you, hypocritical. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. You've been to plenty of football games that are outdoors in the cold. Yes. Hadn't you? Yes. Oh, and, yes. Uh, yes. And 
And several times, have you ever just made the decision, hey, it's halfway through the third quarter, it's too cold for me out here, I'm going home? I've made that decision a few times. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. And then I've made the decision where instead of going to the Michigan football game, I would go to the Lions game the next day instead because it was called in it when the Lions game has been indoors since yeah. 1975 in the Silver right. Dome. So, yes, right. I would rather stay warm inside than going outside and freeze to death for a game. Yeah, the only the only time that I've ever had to stay at a football game after it was either cold or raining was as a member of the marching band. And even then, I think if a person that was in the band would have gone up to the band director and said, hey, it's too cold for me out here. I'm going to have to go back and sit on the bus. They would have probably let them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 you know, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent, but this yeah. Wisconsin situation now is going to affect the Big Ten West. And it'll be interesting to see if any other big name players get COVID. And it may affect the race, and you might not get a Big Ten team in the playoff because of this. Who knows? Let's switch gears and let's go from college football wing to the National Football League and, and the Atlanta Falcons. They get to play a football game tomorrow night, which I actually think is a good thing because yeah. they need to rub, rub the stench off them from the Lions' loss. Yeah, I'm, not know, sure, I'm not sure Carolina is the place to do it, though. <laughs> I'm not sure Carolina is either, but that's where they're going to be playing on Thursday night football. And yeah. I'm actually glad to see it. I'm not a big fan of Thursday night football, but this year in 2020, I am because yeah. anytime it gets, gives me a chance to take my mind off what's going on around us, I'm all for it. And, and, and when you're talking Falcons, this defense, Wayne, is not very good. The offense must be balanced. They must con run the ball. They must control the clock. They must have some type of balance to keep their poorest defense off the field. Actually, it didn't play so bad last week, but it was against Detroit. Detroit's got a pretty decent offense, yeah. but this Carolina football team is better than the Lions, Wayne. The Falcons are going to have to play better than it against Detroit for them to have a chance at all. Yeah, and it's uh, at uh, Carolina. It is at Carolina. I, But you know what? It's not much of a home field advantage. I mean, you see the um, – you see the games um, that um, that um, uh, you know that are going on. They're not big crowds unless you watch yeah. the Cowboys game. They, I, they I seem still, to have a big crowd. I still think that there's a lot more to home field advantage than having your own fans in the stadium. I think there's also a comfort level as to playing in a place that you're familiar with, uh, the locker room you're familiar with, uh, the facility that you're familiar with, and it's one that you are at often. And so I think there's more to home field advantage than just the uh, uh, fans. Well, ESPN here, they give uh, Carolina 55.7% chance of winning and Atlanta yeah. right around 44%. When you look at Carolina, of course, they're led by Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback. He's had a decent season, eight, touch eight touchdowns, five picks. Of course, the Falcons are led by Matt Ryan, obviously 2,100 yards, 12 TDs, and three interceptions. Yeah. He's had a fabulous football season, but this is a chance for Todd Gurley to redeem himself yeah. after flopping, you know, after falling in the end zone. Detroit, we talked about it on, on the show on what on Monday, how the Lions yeah. actually fooled him and he went in the end zone half heartedly tackling him. But this is a chance for Todd Gurley and for Hill to get going and run the football and get everything out of their minds from that loss on Sunday. Yeah, that's one thing about football is when you get out there and you're playing uh, down after down, uh, each down is a chance for redemption, whether you're on defense or offense. And, of course, we all know from Monday's game that everybody's blaming the coaches. Well, I'm telling you, the biggest blunder was the defense letting Detroit go 75 yards in 64 seconds with no timeouts. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the defense can step up and play really well this week. And if they can against Carolina, I think they have a chance. I mean, Carolina is what three and four this season. So you yeah. Detroit is three and three. They may be a little better than the Lions from what I've seen, but you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty. You know, I think the Falcons have a shot to win this game. Everybody, we all pick Carolina just because of what's yeah. going on. But Atlanta has a it's a chance to win this game. They just need to put the last game behind them. And they got Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones. Yeah. They've got a lot of talent on this offense, yeah. Wayne. <clears throat> They've yeah, got a lot I, of talent. Uh, 
that's the thing about uh, football, though, is, uh, you know, unless the score is like seven to three or ten to seven, you really can't say that one score is what cost you the game. I mean, you get into these games that are, you know, 22 to 23 or, you know, 40 something to 30 something. There's a lot more uh, scoring that went on before that final score. And those should be considered in the, you know, why you lost the game also. Right. We all know the Falcons have lost three games where they've had a above a 98% chance of winning in the fourth quarter this season. Had they won them all, they would be four and two at this point, and they will be right in the division race along with Tampa Bay, New Orleans. But they're not. They're one and six, and it is what it is at this point. And Tack McKinley is going to be out, and they're trying to trade him. There are some reports uh, from your national NFL reporters, Ian Rapport, one of them, that the Falcons are trying to trade Tack McKinley. Yeah. You know, I tell you what, if, it gets, if the season gets worse and they can start trading guys for draft picks and still yeah. building a young team for the next regime to come in, that's not a bad idea, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, I think the Falcons are really – they're pretty good. Yeah. I well, mean, I'll tell you – quarterback. Uh, you know, this this has nothing to do with the Falcons, but um, one ahead, player that I, one player I think should be traded or you know consider retirement is uh, Gaskowski uh, in uh, Tennessee. Oh yeah, uh, he gave the yeah. uh, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh Steelers a nice uh, early Thanksgiving gift on Sunday. Yeah, but um, you know he was a career, really, though. he was he was a super good player at Memphis, and he played really really well up there in New England. But, right, yeah. um, you know, the shine's gone off the apple, and maybe he needs to go down there to Tampa. Well, guard John Miller is questionable for Carolina, along with defensive tackle Zach Kerr. And, um, you know, those are uh, – and, uh, of course, uh, Haynes, the defensive end, is also questionable for Carolina on tomorrow night. So, it'll be interesting for sure with the Falcons game with Carolina. It's exciting. Wayne? What other NFL games are you looking forward to this weekend besides the uh, Falcons game on Thursday night? You know, that's really the only one I'm, I'm kind of focused on. Uh, occasionally, I like to consider the Buffalo Bills because uh, I've got some friends online who are Buffalo fans, and anytime they uh, uh, win a game, uh, I kind of get to celebrate with them. That's nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm looking forward to the Steelers and the uh, – the Baltimore Ravens, you know, they don't like each other at all. That's going to be a uh, snobber knocker, especially on each side of the defensive <laughs> football. Each quarterback, you know, uh, Roethlisberger is going to have to keep his head on the uh, on his swivel along with Mo- Lamar Jackson because yeah. each defensive line is going to bring it. Uh, T.J. Watt for Pittsburgh, we all know how good he is. So, yeah. you know, this is I'm not T.J. Watt, J.J. Watt, excuse yeah. me. I got all these Watts. There's three Watts in the NFL, and two of them play for Pittsburgh. So yeah. hey, don't I'm they also out with that one. Uh, don't they also do some kind of uh, uh, Subway show? commercial? Well, no, they, they do some kind of – it may not be them, but there's a, a group of brothers that do some kind of – TV show where they have these uh, gladiator type people and they're running through mazes and you know it kind of re- reminds me of that um, show with the uh, the gladiators it used to be out in the eighties you know where they'd have contestants and they try to get to some goal and then they have other people try to block them. I yeah, think I can't remember what, what that is. You would you, yeah. you would think we'd remember. I was around in but, the eighties and I know you were. Yeah. JJ, he was probably diapers in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it's a it's a show that's uh it, they've got a current one on TV, but uh, it's all right. But again, it's just something to watch when there's nothing else to watch. <laughs> well, there's a couple other games I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the Cowboys Eagles game. Obviously, I want to. That game is going to be for first place in the NFC East. Dallas is two and five. Philadelphia is two four and one. That just shows you what a pathetic division that is. And the other game I'm looking forward to is, oh gosh, I'm looking forward to the Colts and Lions, obviously. That's Indianapolis is a three point favorite. That'll be a good one. Yeah. Um, there was one other one here. I'm sitting here trying to scroll in here. I guess uh, San, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, San Francisco, Seattle, maybe kind of interesting. Uh, if oh, you're I in, think so West too. Coast, sure. And, and, and Jimmy uh, Garoppolo is back. Right. So, um, you know, yes, I think the 49ers are starting to hit on all cylinders, and they're going to be a tough yeah. out. And, of course, 
the Monday night football game with Tampa Bay and the Giants, it might not be much, a, much of a game, but yeah. when Tom Brady's playing, everybody watches. And then you've got uh, Danny Dimes Jones for the, that's what they call him, Danny Dimes out in New York. <laughs> I, I tell you what, Danny better start throwing some dimes because if they end up with a worse record, they'll be drafting Ch- Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson. Yeah, I'm not, sure speak, he, I'm, sorry, I'm, not sure he, I'm not sure he wants to go up there. Well, he's either going to the Giants or the Jets. He's, he's the Jets are they haven't won a game this year, and I just wonder if they are going to win a ball game. I always think an NFL team is going to at least win one game a year. Of course, the Lions turned the trick before they got Matt Stafford, but um, this Jets team could go winless. They're no, not. You, you, they're you, never, you never know. You never know with these NFL draft picks because in the past people have gotten a first round draft pick. As soon as they got him, they trade him to some other team for several more picks and several experienced players that they need. So just well, because well, he's just because he's drafted by a New York team doesn't mean he's going to be going up there. Well, here's the thing, Trevor. Uh, before we, you know, talking about Trevor Lawrence, he said this week. I don't, I don't know if I may come back to Clemson for my senior year. And every Falcon fan's going, okay, if we stink next year, we can get you next year maybe. Yeah, see, I, you know, I, I don't that. think that way, but there are fans out there that think like that. That's a, that's a poor way to think. I do not like I that. I think it is too. This is something that I take a stand on is I don't like it when people assume that teams are going to lose so that they can build for the future. The only way you build for the future is you keep winning. You win as much as possible. A good example of that is Alabama. I mean, it's been years since they've had what you would call a a rebuilding season, and they've lost players and had players leave constantly. You focus on winning. Don't lose so that you can have a better chance in the future. That's just dumb. That's well said. It's perfectly said, actually. And a loser has a loser's mentality. And teams that win, like the Patriots and the Steelers uh, and the Packers, they have a winning mentality. They win consistently year in and year out. You look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, they've had three coaches since the 1970s. Chuck Knoll, yeah. uh, Bill Cowher, yeah. and now, and, and gosh, I'm stuck on the Steelers head coach now, um, Mike Tomlin. Yeah. I love Mike Tomlin's press conferences. I get on, I get on every week on Twitter and go to the Steelers uh, Twitter feed yeah. and I watch the Mike Tomlin press conference. It's so worth it. Yeah. Well, today we're uh, no, we we make no excuses here. Uh, you know, he just yeah. the way he's so forceful and so funny. I mean, he, do you think his press conferences are better than any coaches in the NFL? Do you think it's uh, more entertaining than the Coach O uh, uh, news conferences? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I do. I Even though I love the Coach O's, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love President Trump. <laughs> well, I love it. I mean, I just love how he just comes out and says it. And, yeah. Well, he was know. he was that way when he was at Miss uh, Old Miss. Uh, he was the head coach at Old Miss, and he was the same way. Uh, you know, this he, he hasn't changed, and that's pretty cool that he's uh, the same guy he is. He's the same <laughs> thing when he was the intern coach at USC, and yeah. and Reggie Bush and Matt Liner, who do the Fox pregame every week. They love Coach O, and you can understand yeah. why. And but you know, back to Tomlin. I mean, this guy, this he has never had a losing season since he's been a coach of the Steelers for what 12, 13 years now. The right. worst he's- season he had was last year at eight and eight. And guess what? He played with a third and four string quarterback at one time, and they still finished five hundred because their defense was so good. Yeah, well, unlike the Dallas Cowboys, the Steelers fans will not put up with a uh, losing season. That's true. Yes, uh, poor. You heard about Derek Jerry Jones's press conference this week, where he went off on a couple of Dallas local uh, sports talk uh, guys when he had an interview, and uh, he had some few call for words for them, and I will not repeat those words on yes. this podcast. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know, when I'm looking at the lines for all the games, and we did this on Monday. But the one that stands out, which is so rare, is the Chiefs are almost a 20-point favorite against the Jets. 19 and a half. It was 20 yesterday. I don't know why they moved it down a half a point. I mean, I I think the Chiefs are going to cover. It's in Kansas City. They're going to run the Jets off the field. Yeah, and there's I don't even think the people that love those big spreads would take the Jets on that one. And no, no, no. <laughs> no, I would take the Chiefs, and I actually, if the spread was 24 to 27, I would take them. Rarely in an NFL game do you get the spread at 19, 20 points. These yeah. are pros. These are the best players in the world. They're fantastic athletes. 
they're the best of the best, whether they came from an SEC school or a one double A school or an HBCU school. It no. doesn't matter. They're the best. And you know what? These NFL scouts do a terrific job of going where they must to find these football players. And that's yeah. why that line is so rare. Yeah, and they're and they're not using analytics too much either. They do a little bit in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not as like much baseball. as they do in baseball. <laughs> right. I agree with you six thousand percent there. Um, another interesting game is the Saints and the Bears. You know, the New Orleans is a four point favorite in Chicago, and yeah. uh, I'd like the Saints to win that game. Well, I I don't care for either one of those teams, so I haven't even thought about it. <laughs> what what, what uh, do I need to torture myself thinking about those two uh, teams? I understand. I'll be in Pennsylvania this weekend watching the Steelers Ravens match up with my wife. Yeah. I can't I can't wait to see that. That's going to be a great matchup. And um, you know, I looked at another game here: the Vikings and the Packers. The Packers are favored by six and a half. I think they're going to cover that against Minnesota. Minnesota's terrible. The game's well, in Green Bay. I've I've got some friends that are Minnesota fans, so I, I kind of have to lean that way. Um, One of my best friends here is a Minnesota fan, yeah. and, you know, the poor guy's taking a beating this year. I mean, they're just not very good. Well, so, well, I think anything else, because I think that's going to do it. I, I've enjoyed the show with you tonight, Wayne. Uh, JJ right. will be back with you on Monday. I will be out, as I will be out of town. I well. will not be on. And hopefully, hopefully, just hopefully JJ will come in yeah, and his Bulldogs will win against Kentucky. Yeah, his they Falcons should. will win tomorrow night against, against the Panthers. Well, I'll be and, pulling for them. And Georgia State will beat Coastal Carolina, and I'm pulling Ooh, for all that's three the, of these games too. But, I, a, you know, I have a feeling a, it's going to be one out of three Georgia well, that's a, and the other two lose. Well, that, that's a tall order to think that uh, Georgia State is going to win against uh, Coastal Carolina. They've got a lot of staff. But you know what? Hey, you guys will have Dave Cohen on. He'll be able to go over the de- the game in, in detail with you guys. And uh, hopefully J.J. can wipe the stench off. The the Braves losing three games to one, and then the Falcons losing this weekend to the Lions. And uh, hopefully he'll uh, – He'll come in a little more uh, colorful this week than he did yeah. on Monday night. Cause I, I mean, I talked to him on Sunday and, and he was just, he's like, I'm done with sports this year. I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. I mean, if, look, teams go through rough times. They go through great times. So, well, Wayne, yeah. I've enjoyed it. Um, uh-huh. Really appreciate it and appreciate you um, uh, coming on with me and talking sports with me for yeah. my friend. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign up with the Get You One Thing, and uh, we will see you all uh, next week. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. 